What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be building our own NAS for under, we're going to say $60. It's going to vary depending on how big of a hard drive you get, but at the end of the day, we're going to build one of these out and we're going to call it the Pi NAS or the P NAS, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But in here I have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, I have a SSD hard drive and a SATA to USB cable. So give me one second and I'll show you the inside. So in here we have our Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. This is just one of the old ones I have laying around. I've shown them on the channel a bunch of times. It's just older ones that I've worked with. I have a inland SSD. These are probably about $15-$20 dollars at Micro Center and you can use any SSD you want, doesn't matter. You can get one of the crucial ones off Amazon. I just got a 500 gig one the other day for about $20. Would work perfect for this. And this SATA the USB cable, I was actually a little worried about it but it worked pretty well. I had no issues with it, my drive showed up right away, and it's, it's a little long, but it works. I don't really care, it's going to get tucked away in the server rack probably, so this will be perfect. This was $10 off Amazon. I'll put links in the description for everything, and then I did 3D print up this case, so this is the top half, and then in here you can see that it's like a little tray, so I just used some M.2 screws that I have. Uh, I have a PC uh, kit of screws to use for when I build out computers and when I build out my server it's when I needed all the screws but they just kind of screw right in and then the hard drive just kind of screws right on the bottom you can see the screws right in and then the hood just snaps over top and then everything sits nicely in this little box except the cable but that's okay and the hard drive I know it kind of looks like it sticks out but it sits flat right on the desk or wherever you put it and everything's tucked away really nicely so that's what we're going to build today, but how we're going to do it is that we're going to use the Raspberry Pi, of course, and we're going to use Open Media Vault. Now this was a solution that I used years ago. This is actually how I built my first NAS, but I did it a little differently. I used a USB external hard drive and my Raspberry Pi 3. This was actually the same Raspberry Pi that I built that NAS off of, so when I built it up again, the DHCP lease recognized itself. But we're going to use Open Media Vault, and this is going to be the updated guide for 2023. Raspbian light did upgrade itself so there are some changes to how you gotta do it so I'm going to show you that in this video so let's just get right started so to start just like in the past when we worked with Raspberry Pis you are going to need a micro SD card I like using the Sandisk ones and I like buying actual ones from like Best Buy or any of my local electronic stores I tried buying them off Amazon once and there's a lot of bad reviews saying that they're counterfeit or they don't work properly so I don't like taking the risk and I just go to Best Buy and I buy the micro SD card. It's a little bit more money, but I get a really reputable good one. And the other thing you're going to need is one of these micro SD to USB. So you can see it has a little slot. I know it's hard to see, but it has a little slot and then you just slide the micro SD card in and it's readable over USB. So we're going to use that when I get the setup plugged in and then we're going to image the Pi. So when you start plugging in that uh, micro SD card, especially if there's any stuff on it or if it doesn't, it's going to want to format it on Windows, so I just close all these out, and then we're going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager. I talked about this in another video where we worked for Raspberry Pi. You just download this from the Raspberry Pi site and then install it. I'll put a link in the description of how to do it. My micro SD already has stuff on it, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use the erase function. I'm going to choose my micro SD card. Make sure you choose the right one. I have a external hard drive, and if I click that one by mistake, everything's gone. So make sure you select the right one, and I'm just going to click right, and it's just going to wipe the micro SD card. I just like to do it this way, so when I do do an install, I know that everything's gone, and it doesn't have to try to read right over it. And you can see over here, it's already been erased. So we had a couple more windows pop up on my other monitor, so I'm just going to close those out real quick. And now we can come over here, and now we're ready to write. So when it's time to write the OS, we're going to use Writer's Bay Pi Lite. So we're going to come over here to the other category. And this is where it gets different. So I didn't realize this at first, and I was testing this out the other day, and I just couldn't get it to work. So Raspberry Pi released a new version, and it released on 10.10.2023. So that's about a month ago. And that's why if you look at any of the other guides on YouTube right now, they all just say to use this version, but it's not going to work. I sat here trying to figure this out, and nothing worked. I kept trying to install Open Media Vault, and it kept failing, it kept saying it, and then I realized it's because it doesn't like the version of Bullseye or whatever else it was using. So I tried using Debian, because Debian had the right version of Bullseye, but I couldn't get Debian to work right on my Raspberry Pi. So that's when I realized last night that they changed the version, and you need to use the legacy version. So if we come over here to other, 
we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to grab the legacy light version so you can see that this is from may of 2023 so we're going to use this one we're going to select that i'm going to choose my storage and then we're going to click the gear option and we're going to put in some uh sentence for our nas so it's easier to work with so we're going to enable ssh so we can ssh over so we don't need to hook it to a monitor we're going to set our host name and our password if you want to use the public key, you can, but we're going to be local, so we don't really need to. If you're not going to plug it into the network physically and you want to use it over Wi-Fi, you can, and you can configure it right here. You can use, and then just enter in your Wi-Fi network name and the password. And then make sure you change the country to your right country. And then the last thing is to set the local settings in America, U.S. with the U.S. keyboard. So we're going to click Save, and I'm going to click Write, and we're going to click Yes. And remember, Yes is on the right, so don't click on the left and then wonder why it's not working. So we'll click yes and then we're going to let this image and we'll be back so as this goes through the installer it's going to actually write to the disk and then it verifies the install so while it does that let's go over to a browser and we're going to open up a write-up just to follow through to uh, do this install open media vault so if you search how to install open media vault on raspberry pi there will be a bunch of different articles i would there's the open media vault one but it doesn't really help you because it just gives you the iso image if you're going to install this on an actual like VM, which you can do, um, you would download the ISO and install it from there, but it won't work that way for the Raspberry Pi install. So I'm going to use the Pi My Life Up one because it's a good write-up, and I think I probably used this originally the first time I made Open Media Vault years and years ago. So it's pretty straightforward, and it's going to sort of scroll down, and we're going to use this once we get started. And of course, I'll put a link to this down in the description below. Okay, that one, it's all done right and verifying, you're going to get the pop-up saying that it's been written, and we're good to remove the SD card, and then from there we're just going to put it back in the Raspberry Pi, and then power it on, and we'll be right back. Alright, so after I put the SD card back in, I powered on the Raspberry Pi, and I already know the IP address because I've used this Pi in the past, but if you're not aware, you're just going to log into your router, and then you could hit the Wi-Fi map, or we did set a host name, so if we go into PuTTY, you could put in the host name so mine was pinas.local and then I could just hit open and it should be able to connect but it might not resolve the host name but it did so two ways you can do it so you can use your host name or you can go and look up the uh, IP address in your router's connections table so I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so we could all see so of course as always we're going to do sudo apt upgrade uh, we're going to do update and then we're going to do an upgrade afterwards, so it's pretty quick. Uh, the version isn't that out of date, so there's not a lot of new packages. And then I'm just going to run an upgrade afterwards, and then we'll be right back. So while this is finishing, we're just going to scroll over and we'll start doing some of the commands. So we can actually see over here, it just gives us the wget command, which I'm going to copy, and then that's going to grab it from the open media fold in GitHub, and it's made so it works for the Raspberry Pi. So then when I come back over here, this should just be about done, and then we're going to get right into it. So now that that's all done, we're going to take that script that we just copied, and we're going to paste it in here, we're going to click enter, and we're going to run it. So now we're going to let this run, and again, if you get one of those errors saying that the version of Bullseye isn't right, it'll start running, then it'll stop, and it'll say that you don't have the right version of Bullseye, make sure you're running the legacy version of Raspberry Pi OS. If you're not, then it's not going to have the right version. You're going to have to switch it and reflash the SD card. But if you do have the right version, it will start running all this script. And it's going to take a couple minutes, so when this is all done, we'll be back, and then we're going to finish with the Open Media Vault setup. Okay, so after it finishes running the install script, it's going to take a little bit, probably 10 to 15 minutes, but after it's all done, we can just do a quick clear. And then we come over here, we do LSB OK. Now we can see that our hard drive is in there. So mine is SDA, and I have SDA2 is my partition I want to use. So after the install, we're going to log in, and it's going to be admin, and the default password is open media vault. I already logged in, so I'm just going to log in with my account. But the default credentials are admin, and then the password is open media vault, all one word, no caps. And I'm just going to come over here and sign in. And then the first thing we want to do is come over to user settings and you can click in here to change your password and then you can change the admin account to anything that you want so it's more secure. The other thing to keep in mind is that Open Media Vault uses the local Raspberry Pi account. So my Carmine account is here, but it's not an admin. So if you do log in with your local account, it's not going to be an admin, you're not going to be able to do anything. 
So you can make it an admin, you can come in here and you can edit, and you can give it uh, admin privileges. So we can uh, we can change stuff around in here, we can give it admin privileges, but it's not gonna be an admin by default. Next thing we're gonna do is come over here and click on storage, and we're gonna click on file systems, and we are gonna make a file system. So I already have one in there, but the way you can either do it is you can create a new one, and you can select whichever one you want to do. Probably use ext4, it's probably the easiest, but yeah, I already had an existing one, so I'm just gonna click over here, and I would have selected my existing disk. So I already have mine, it's already set, it's mounted, so we're all good to go. The next thing we need to do is create the share folder, so still in storage in here, we're gonna come over here and we'll click shared folders. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna create the folder. So we're gonna call it Pinez. I'm gonna select my file system, so it's SDA2, the one we were just working with. And then you can make the path how you want it. And then I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to click save. So now I have my path. We're going to click apply. I'm going to apply these settings. And now the path will be made and we can work with it. So now that we have that all set up, the next thing I want to do is come over here to services and we're going to set up SMB so we can use SMB on the share. So we're just going to come over here to, I just came in here, SMB, click settings, and we're going to click enable. And I want to make it so it's browsable and let's see, is there anything else I want to do in here? I think we're good. So I'm going to click save and then of course we're going to have to apply those settings. So we're going to apply those real quick and then we'll let that do it. Now after that's applied, the only other thing left is to come over here and make a share and we're going to give it that share we made earlier. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to select Pinez and then we're going to come into here and we can select any of the other options we want. So I want it to be browsable. And we're going to make it public, so we're going to do guest allowed, so you can actually access the share, and then we're going to click save, and we'll apply it one more time. So now we have our SMB share set up, so actually if we come over here and I go to run, and I try to whack whack over to my host, and click OK, and here's Pi NAS. And here's our share right there, so now we have our own NAS run off our Raspberry Pi with our SSD that we put into it. So we do have our share all set up. So we are still have some things we can configure. We can make different users in here, or we can make groups to access who can share with the NAS. And we could also handle different things in here. I believe you can manage the share this way too. So you can limit who accesses what, but that's with the services. Uh, if we do come over here to system, there are plugins. So you can scroll through here and add plugins. Like you could put a, Failed to ban plugin in here so you can prevent people from trying to brute force in. I know there is OpenVPN or WireGuard so you can VPN into it and access it through here. So there's stuff in there and then there's also your updates so you can click into your updates and then you would come in here and it would refresh and look for new updates. But that's how you would set up your NAS with OpenMediaVault on a Raspberry Pi. So that was a quick simple video and it's how to set up your own Raspberry Pi. We're going to say for under $60 with pretty much everything independent on how big of a hard drive you get. So all I did was use a Raspberry Pi. I printed up a 3D case for it. I put the link to the print in the SDLs in the description. I just got it off of Thingiverse and I printed it on there. I might even throw a little time lapse of the prints in there, but I printed it up, I put it together. I just used some M.2 screws that I had laying around and a USB to SATA adapter, which I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I'll put all the links in the description so you guys have everything. But that was how we make our own NAS for under $60. I know there's always questions about NASs, but there were some questions in my Discord a while back about you know which NAS to use and try to get the best with the budget. This is a good NAS. This is a good NAS for what it is. It's going to be reliable, it's simple, and it's affordable. So you just tuck it away in the corner, just like all of our other Raspberry Pi projects, and forget it's there until your hard drive runs out of space, and then we got to change that up. But I appreciate everybody for watching. I do have a Discord and a Twitter. I'll put links to both of those below. Come follow me on Twitter. Come join my Discord. We'll chat about whatever we want to chat about. Projects we're working on and all sorts of good stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.